I work with missing animals um, quite quite often and a lot of these have been gone for 6, 12 months, 2 years, 3 years, however long. Uh, they are probably not coming back. They have passed while they've been out there. They've been stolen, of course. There's that scenario as well. Some animals leave because they don't want to be in their home anymore for mm -hmm. various reasons. Uh, but that is heartbreaking for the pet parent that loves that animal and there's no closure. I mean, that's a part of the grieving process, isn't it? There's When there's no closure on something, is there something that you um, have discovered with that on, you know, I don't know, some education or what to do with that particular part? It's um, a complex answer because yes. part of part of the answer is at some point, most people need some sort of closure. Otherwise, mm. it's a sense of haunting. It's a sense of, you know, something's always hanging over them and they're just like waiting, waiting, waiting. And that's not necessarily healthy at some point. Yes. So, so people, I think, need to be supported in figuring out when is it okay for them to let go to have some closure. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily giving up hope, but it means maybe letting go. And in that letting go, maybe there are some, you know, ceremonies, some rituals, some, some letter writing, or right. you know, with so many tools to help mm. have closure. Um, that that's a, a an important part of helping someone move on. Yes, I, I think because saying to someone, you know, you've got to let it go. It's been going on too long now. You've got to let it go. And it's like, I don't know how to do that. I can't just say, okay, I'm going to let it go tomorrow at three o'clock because life human doesn't work like that. But, um, yes, writing and all ceremony and those things. Do you find journaling a really powerful tool for for some of this? I think journaling is a powerful tool for almost any kind of healing. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm a writer, so that, you know, yes. itself to me. But, but no, I think it's a really good form of expression. And a lot of times as people write, especially if they do it by hand and not on the computer, mm. they, they uncover just because the unconscious starts coming through the pen they uncover things that they weren't really aware of or they were defending against and it just comes out on paper. Yes, and that's, I love that. that's part of how they educate themselves about where they are in the process. Mm. And that's, you know, awareness is the first step of healing, of any healing. Yes, yeah. It makes me think of art therapy and, and those types of things, you know, coloring in and painting and, and coming into that meditative space, I guess, where there is there is space for the subconscious to come through. That's right. I use a lot of um, art therapy in terms of collages. Oh um, yeah, making collages of their pets. You know, that's a that's a uh, often a way that I've found with clients that it's been very healing to put a bunch of pictures together in a way in a and in a format that they can frame or they can have or it's a puzzle or whatever it is um mm. and and reframe how they look at those pictures so you know the whole journey of grief is about not that the grief necessarily ever goes away human or pet loss yes that it changes how it affects you that's the work. Not yeah. only does it how it's affecting you, but in transformative grief, it's how you can use grief to change you, to heal things that weren't healed before, to make a difference in how you live your life now and how you are in relationships going forward with other people. I'm working right now with a client who's two dogs, um, past the uh, end of last year in COVID, a month apart. And she'd had them for a very long time and they were her children. Yes. And she's stuck 
in, um, in that process and getting her unstuck is part of recognizing that the relationship she had with these dogs were her main source of joy. That's where she got all those endorphins, all the good stuff. We know what that's like. We've yeah. had, you know, that's what we experience with our animals. And she doesn't know how to get that from a relationship. And so we're so working, we're working on, okay, your your dogs are gone. They're, you're not going to have that source of joy with them. And she got another dog, you know, soon after. And it's, you know, not, it's not her other children. So mm. she's not, it, it's a different personality too. So she's not getting that joy from even this dog. But, you know, she's open to unlocking that grief unlocking her heart and doing the grief work so that she's now hopeful that she can find joy like that with someone. That's huge. Mm. Huge. Yeah. And, and honoring her do two dogs because what do dogs teach us? They teach us self-love through their unconditional love. And without self-love, it's very hard to take in other people's love.